Hi YouTube. Following on from my previous video where I created an API in Python with FastAPI, I now want to take that a step further and instrument my API with OpenTelemetry so that I can push the trace data to a backend and see how my API is behaving uh, at runtime. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I'll link to it above. I suggest watching that first and then coming back here and watching this one. But what I've got here is uh, the same API endpoint that I had in the previous video with one minor change, which is I just loop around three times, sleep for a second each time, just to introduce a little bit of a delay into my API endpoint. So to follow along with this video, you will need to be at the end of the previous video and you will also need Docker installed. So the first thing we're gonna need to do when we generate our trace data is have a back end to push the trace data into. For this video, I'm going to use Jaeger. So I went onto the Jaeger website and they give us a Docker command. I'm going to start up Jaeger. And if it works, you should be able to go to localhost on 16686, refresh, and you should see Jaeger. Now, how do we actually instrument our application or have it generate trace data? Well, OpenTelemetry offers automated tracing for certain frameworks. Add the OpenTelemetry distro to your requirements.txt, ignore lines five and six for now, and run pip3 install requirements. We have the base packages for OpenTelemetry now installed. That module also gives you access to two tools called OpenTelemetry Bootstrap and OpenTelemetry Instrument. OpenTelemetry Bootstrap install makes it easy to install the OpenTelemetry modules. The problem is it's quite verbose. The Bootstrap doesn't know exactly which packages you need, so it actually gives you everything. Rather than running that, if you run OpenTelemetry Bootstrap requirements, it will print out the modules that it would install. So you can see here we have a, a, an AWS Lambda module, we have a logging module, a module for Flask, a module for Fast API, and so on and so forth. The only one we really need is this Fast API. So copy and paste that line into your requirements.txt file. The final thing we need is a way to get the trace data out of our application and into Jaeger. For that, we need an exporter that will export the traces from our application into Jaeger. Now, Jaeger uses the OTLP protobuf gRPC by default, so I'm also going to install that. So with that, save the file and again run pip3 install requirements. And the other handy tool we get with OpenTelemetry is this OpenTelemetry instrument utility. In the previous video, we directly ran Uvicorn. This time, we'll wrap it with OpenTelemetry instrument. We'll also pass a service name, which is important for Jaeger to identify our microservice. So yours doesn't have to be my.first.api. You can call your service whatever you like, but when you're done, hit enter. You should see Uvicorn start your app as normal. If we launch a new terminal window and do a curl to localhost 8000, we get our response back from our API. However, now if you flick into Jaeger and refresh the page, you should see a couple of services. Jaeger query is Jaeger tracing itself. So ignore that one. The one you're interested in is obviously my first API. So select it and click find traces. And here you can see you've got your very first open telemetry trace inside Jaeger. This view gives you a high level overview of the trace. You see the endpoint, you see how many spans are inside this trace, you see the response time and when the trace occurred. Clicking into that will give you the lower level details of exactly what happened. So you can see the get request to the root responded in three seconds and it had a status code of 200. Of course, the first question is, well, why did that take three seconds to respond? Imagine I have access to Jaeger, but I don't have access to the code. I can't necessarily see why that took three seconds. This is an important point about OpenTelemetry and the auto instrumentation libraries. They trace at the boundaries of your system. So they trace the incoming and outgoing network calls, but not necessarily what happens inside the application. So yes, we are only doing a sleep, 
But imagine you're reading some files and those file reads take a long time. You wouldn't by default see that in your traces. So let's expand this example to add some detail into these traces. To do that, we actually need to adjust the code. This file is the same as the previous file, except I've expanded it to manually trace those sleep loop calls. So we'll see that in the trace. So of course we've got our imports and then we initialize the open telemetry tracer and then we need a tracer itself. From there, what we need to do is start a new span for each loop. So a span is open telemetry's terminology for a sub action within a bigger picture. So if your API takes three seconds, every logical thing that it does should be a separate span. So what you're seeing here is inside the loop, we are creating a new span on each time around the loop, and we're calling it a loop count one, loop count two, loop count three, and then we exit. So if I shut down my existing API, instead of running my uninstrumented app, I'll run my new version. And again, I will send a curl request to my endpoint. One, two, three. I will refresh Jaeger and this time my second trace you can see still took three seconds, but this time it has six spans. So clicking into that, I can actually start to see what was happening at a code level that caused that three second delay. So here you can see loop count one took a second, loop count two took a second, and loop count three took a second. Notice that now I can see my trace data. I don't need debuggers. I don't need print line statements. I can see this inside my trace data. I don't need to dig through logs to see what happened. So if you found this useful, of course, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you again soon for another video. Thanks for watching.